Ones. Our big story tonight, Lieutenant Governor Glenn McConnell will be the next president of the College of Charleston. The school's board of trustees chose him today. He confirms to us that he will accept the position. In the hours after hearing of his selection, students gathered in the college's cistern yard to protest against McConnell. News 2's Cuthbert Langley was the only reporter there, and he has more. I feel like I have been betrayed. I spend my money here and I expect the people we put in charge to listen to us. It is a board for a reason. But students at the College of Charleston say the board didn't listen. Two petitions totaling 2,000 signatures were gathered, asking the board not to choose Glenn McConnell as its next president. But that was the decision Saturday and many are outraged with the board's 20 members. They didn't really blink and the fact that it was unanimous made me concerned that they hadn't really considered all the voices of the faculty and the Senate and the students had, that had come out vigorously against his election. The concerns seem to be twofold. One, what they call his lack of experience as an educator. He's not very qualified. He has no higher ed experience. As a secondary ed major, I don't feel that as a good person to represent our school. The second side of that coin worries that McConnell's enthusiasm with the Civil War will tarnish the image of the liberal arts college. Our minority population is incredibly small, and when you have someone who's backed certain policies like keeping a Confederate flag up in the State House and who's actually owned a Confederate memorabilia store, that's not the best image. Others, however, say the decision has been made, so students, faculty, and McConnell himself must unite to better the college's mission and reputation. Everyone wants Mr. McConnell out. I don't want Mr. McConnell out. He's here. He's going to stay. I want to make the best of this for him and for myself. But the overwhelming voice coming out of the collection of students and alumni Saturday night is that the board was focused more on their stature and less on their students. The College of Charleston is known for being a student focused institution and the focus was not on students uh, today. It was on the well-being and the security of individuals political standing. And Cuthbert, we also want to say there were students who had another petition in support of Mr. McConnell. Now, I know he was out of town tonight, but you had a chance to speak with him via phone. What did he have to say? Yeah, Larry, a lot about what he talked to me today was saying, look at my look at his record and not the rhetoric we've been hearing. He talked a lot about the diversity he's worked with, solving problems, making sure African-American colleges um, have the proper funds. And he said this was not a political process. He went through the same process as everybody else. Take a listen. We just got off the phone just about an hour ago. To people who might be worried about you becoming the next president, what, what do you have to say to them? Well, I would say to them, look at my record, not at that rhetoric. My record has been about diversity. It's been about bringing people together. It's been about solving problems. It's been about moving forward with progress. And, you know, you can't please all the people all of the time. And that rhetoric comes from a group that just was not apparently pleased with everything that, uh, that I've done. I know what it takes about listening to different constituencies and bringing people together, and, and that's what I've done. Look, you don't have to like me, but please respect the fact that I'm with you and trying to bring the student experience to a greater level. Now, Larry, he also talked about the uh, the merger, of course, with mm -hmm. the USC and the College of Charleston that really has dominated headlines. He said he doesn't support this, quote, forced merger, but he will work uh, to better partnerships with MUSC and other colleges in the area. Very interesting. Thank you, Cuthbert Langley. Let's take a quick look back at Glenn McConnell's career. Now, he served as chairman of the Charleston County Republican Party from 1978 until 1982. First elected to the South Carolina's 41st Senate District back in 1980. He's been reelected every four years until his last reelection in 2008. McConnell was the Senate president pro tem from 2001 until 2012. He became lieutenant governor after Ken Ard resigned his position in March of 2012 because of ethics violations. The road to the presidency for McConnell has been anything but a smooth one, with people questioning his history as a Civil War enthusiast and a reenactor. I spoke with Thomas Dixon. He's uh, with the Coalition of People United to Take Back Our Community. He said in part, quote, the good old boy system is still in full effect. Until it's broken, the beautiful state of South Carolina cannot be what it could be, end quote. 
You know, News 2 also wanted to know what would happen if the lieutenant governor's seat now that Glenn McConnell is taking over as president of the College of Charleston. Well, current Senate President Pro Tem John Corson would be next in line, but he told the state newspaper that he would not take the office if McConnell became the school's president, which means South Carolina would not have a lieutenant governor until January, when the winner of the November general election would take the oath of office. Now, there's nothing in the state constitution or state law that requires the Senate president to assume the vacated lieutenant governor's office.